Could we soon be seeing robots in the courtroom? Think about that for a minute. Mm. That is the question being asked in a piece by the Daily Star. So experts say artificial intelligence could be a way to combat the flaws and prejudices that come along with human nature. So what do we think of this idea? Imagine a future for a moment where a judge or a jury or both could be AI. Do we like this idea? No. What do you think about this? I, I agree with the audience. I certainly don't like the idea, and <laughs> not just because I'd be out of a job. Um, <laughs> the real reason is that the best part of our legal system is its humanity. And so you can't replace that with artificial intelligence. When you walk into a courtroom, it is so human, and no two humans are alike. And a judge really has to be able to take that into account. And I think we lose all of that. Mm, what if there was, yeah, what if it was like a, maybe not a, a really heavy, heavy case, like something that you maybe not, not necessarily would even do anymore as a lawyer, but maybe like small disputes, small claims court, there is a little country named Estonia in the Baltic region of the world, and they're actually using AI for claims of $8,000 or less, right. and each side has to feed in all of their relevant documents, and then AI spits out a verdict, and then the judge can actually, a human judge can then appeal the decision and they're doing this to ease the backlog because they've got years and years worth of all these small claims courts pretty simple straightforward stuff for the most part what do you think about trying to ease what we know is an overburdened system when it comes to that yeah I mean I think access to justice is really important but I think we can think of better ways and AI actually is being considered when you are doing a lawyer's job like reviewing a contract where you're trying to compare documents so that's something that you'd like to see uh, being taken away because it's more efficient, less costly to the public. But, you know, when it comes to decision making, you know, $8,000 may seem like a small dispute, but it's not small to the person who's suffering through it, right? The person who's out of their, you know, out of their home, out of their apartment, you know, has paid for a car or whatever it is. So I don't think we should be cavalier about it. I do think humans still have something to contribute on this planet. <laughs> and uh, I think in a courtroom, we certainly do. I, I think this is so weird and appalling and like shocking to me because we already talked about the lack of representation in all industries and especially in the judiciary. So if you're talking about some place like the United States and the United States Supreme Court, I think in their 200 and some odd year history to 50 to 30 um, out of, I don't know, over 100 Supreme Court justices, there have only been four women. So that's what right. is that math? Like four into 114, that's like 3%. Exactly. And in Canada, we're not that much better, maybe a little bit. I think we've had almost 90 Supreme Court justices and eight women in total, or right. nine. And correct me. Right. Like, no, no, so it's a low that's number. That's 10%. Yeah. So I'm sorry, you still don't have equality in the justice system in terms of the people who serve. And instead of seeking equality in those numbers, you want robots? Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, what does that say about, yeah. what does that yeah. say about people of color and women as a value in the justice system? That is bonkers to me that we're even considering robots over these people who haven't had opportunities. Yeah, no, I absolutely 100%. agree. I absolutely agree. How about a more diverse judiciary, mm -hmm. right? As you mentioned, how about more women? How about right. more people of color, uh, indigenous peoples? Cody on Facebook writes, since they found that online algorithms have inherent bias, and that's the crux of this article, uh, against people of color and women, when those who program the robot will end up putting in their inherent bias as well. So this doesn't fix the problem. It just makes us angry at the robots. It's true. <laughs> well, I mean, it's true. And I will say, like, I don't even trust my robot vacuum. Like, I'm sure <laughs> that thing. But, but here's one idea. What about in those cases of particularly heinous crimes where it's pretty obvious <laughs> that the person who's accused did it. I'm thinking of the Paul Bernardo cases, those types of things, where you can imagine that a jury will be forever impacted by the details of that case. So I wonder if maybe that's one space where, where like, because I think of it, we've heard of this, jurors who have been traumatized by having to watch or hear or feel the details of a, of a heinous crime. Meh. Maybe? I don't yeah. think so. Well, that would be like one robot for a gazillion cases, right? It's, it's, not, it's not enough of an efficiency, number one. Number two, that case was tried, and the jury did their job, and they did a good job. Uh, it's amazing how resilient we are as humans. We see lots of awful things, and we survive them. But I, I don't think we replace it with AI. And I think, to your point, that is really a concern, because the biases that are built into AI are a significant problem. 
Uh, and I think we are just replacing other biases. But the big thing for me is the humanity of it all. I, I don't think we want to weed out the humanity in our lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I will say that a, a robot, I feel like people are less inclined to question when a robot gives you some kind of output or decision. People almost say, oh, well, robot said so, the computer program said right. so, and they're less likely to question it as they perhaps would rig more rigorously question a human. So for that, I'd be a little bit uh, worried about. And also, when you talk about humanity, let's say, for example, in the States, they actually have a co uh, an AI program called Compass, and it assesses risk for people who want bail in, in a case. And they have found that how does this machine account for something like socioeconomic factors, right. like poverty, like hunger. I mean, like, uh, you know, yes, education level, But maybe. humans don't always do a great job with that either. Sure, but I mean, less really likely. Don't. Sure, but yeah, less I, likely I mean, I'm just saying there, robot. There's been countless stories of, 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 you know, crappy judges who've told women to close their legs, as, and that happened right in Canada as a result of a rape case. Like, there are, I mean, again, I'm not saying AI is the answer. We should all be suspicious of robots, yeah. the, up, the robot uprising. But, uh, <laughs> but I also think that humans are pretty flawed, too. Yeah, hold on. We've got to change our batteries here on the show. <laughs>